today I want to share about how can you use embedding to create your own company's knowledge base. It's almost like having an AI brain that knows the best practice of how your company operates and use that to power day-to-day -day decisions. A couple of days ago, I made a video about how can you fine tune large language model. But fine tuning is just one of the methods you can use to achieve the outcome. Another very useful method is what I call knowledge based embedding. They are serving two different purposes. Fine tuning large language model is useful when you want large language model to behave in certain way. For example, if you want to digitize someone to make it talk like Donald Trump, then that's where you will use fine tuning. But it is not great at retrieving very specific data and knowledge. And that's where the knowledge based embedding comes in. It's particularly useful when you want large language model to have specific domain knowledge like your company's SOP or some private data you're holding. So today I want to talk about how can you use knowledge based embedding. So knowledge based embedding means when a user has a question, instead of sending his question to large language model, which didn't have any idea about your company data, instead you will try to search what are relevant documents about this user's questions. For example, if the user is asking what will be the pricing for a three people team like me, then it will try to find all the content on your pricing page and then feed this user's inquiry as well as the pricing page content to large language model. Let it generate the answer based on this real data. From this process, it can generate far better results than the base model or even fine-tuned model. And that's where embedding and vector storage comes in, where it will try to find relevant information in your company's documents based on user's inquiry. And I will explain a bit what is embedding, what is vector database, what are the difference in the next few minutes. If you already know what it is, feel free to skip ahead. So what is embedding? Embedding is a type of vector. I probably just said two words that means nothing to you. But in a more simpler term, embedding is like a representation of how close each data points are to each other. So for example, think about you have four different images, two kind of trees and two kind of animals, and you can put them into two different dimensions of measurements. One is whether they are tree or animal. Another is whether they are big or small. You can kind of measure each image on those two dimensions and put them in the right place. From there, you will be able to tell like this tree image is very different from this image of little mouse, but there are some similarity between the photo of tree and the photo of element because they are both big. This kind of representation of how close each data point is basically embedding, except the embedding is not measured just two dimensions, but hundreds or even thousands of different dimensions. And embedding models, which is what we normally heard about like open AI embedding or some other open source one, those are almost like a machine that can turn a data into a vector dimension, which is a list of numbers on the right side. Those embedding models is already pre-trained with lots of data. So it has a learned representation of how each two data points are similar to each other. For example, when you present two words like king and queen to the OpenAI embedding model, you probably already learned that those two words are very close and similar in the literacy data that has been trained on. But they could be quite far away in other dimensions, let's say uh, the name of people, because I think king could be a name versus I don't think queen is ever used as a name. I'm just be boring here, but I think you get what I mean. Those embedding models works across different type of medias like image, text, audio, even videos. So those are embeddings and embedding models. The other concept is vector database. If you're in the AI space for a while, you probably heard about Pinecorn, Chroma, and they are normally what we call vector database. The embedding model turning data into vector representations, but you need a place to store all those vector data and be able to retrieve very effectively so that you can do things like similarity search. This is where those vector databases like Chroma and Pinecorn come in. They are specialized in terms of storing and retrieving vector data. So the way it works is that assuming the user have a question, we first they use embedding model to vectorize this user's question so that we can map it on the vector data sets and tell these two yellow dots data are very close or in similar cluster, and then it returns those information back. So this is how the embedding model and vector database work together. I know this part could be a bit confusing, so please feel free to comment below if you have any question you want to clarify. And those knowledge-based embedding, I think is super, super useful for business automation and workflow. Because when you think about how it works today, most of business knowledge kind of lives inside someone's head instead of sharing across everyone on the team. And often it's very hard to articulate what are the best practices that those top people did, but other people on the team are not doing. 
And this creates a lot of overheads for business. If a core people on the team leave, then all those knowledge are gone. And the way how business solve this problem traditionally is that they were come up with 40, even hundreds pages of documents, articulate what's the best sales process, a list of different SOPs. And honestly, nobody reads and nobody cares about those documents because they outdated very quickly. And there's no real quality control about uh, whether people are using it in the actual decision process. But on the other side, with large language model and the embedding knowledge base, what if we can take all the emails and customer interactions into an embedding so that next time when any person, even a junior customer support, receive a customer complaint or objections, it can automatically do a similarity search inside the knowledge base to find what was the last time a similar customer complaint happened and how those top performers behave and then generate a response based on all those information. This can really close apps between top performers and junior employees. All we need is just create a knowledge base and then let large language model learn and mimic the behavior. This is what I want to show you today, a case study of automatically draft customer emails based on the company best practice. Let's get it. So the first thing we need to do is getting the knowledge base data ready. For this use case where we will generate response for the customer email based on the best practice of sales, I simply just explore a bunch of email chains where it has two columns. This is a customer's email message. This is a response from our top sales people. And I literally just export from email as this data pair for roughly 200 rows. You can put more as well if you need. And what we want to do is vectorize this data. So we can do a similarity search. And once you have those data ready, we can start implementing. All right, once you get the data ready, let's create a folder and open that folder in Visual Studio and making sure you add CSV data in the same folder. And as always, create a .env file where you will store the open AI API key. And then let's create app.py. And there are four steps we're gonna take. Firstly, we will try to load and vectorize the CSV data. Second is we will create a function for similarity search. And then we will set up the large language model, feed the search results into part of prompts, then we will generate response. So to do that, we will firstly try to import a list of different libraries as above, and then do load.env, which will load the OpenAI API key from .env file. And then the first thing we will do is vectorize the CSV data. We will create a loader variable and use Lanchin's CSV loader, define the file path to the CSV file you uploaded. And the way Lanchin CSV loader works is that each row here will be extracted as one individual data point. So it will be in pair. And in this CSV file, I should have roughly 214 rows. So in this way, the size of each data point is already pretty small. So we don't need to do any text splitting. But if you are loading, let's say a 40 page PDF file of your user menu, then you will need to add text splitter to break down your big chunk of data into small chunks for the vector search later. But for this, we don't need text splitter. And then you will do loader.load to get all those documents. And we can try to print out the documents to take a look. So I will try to run Python app.py. So as you can see, it returns the results of the first row we have in the CSV. And we can also try to print the length of this documents to see whether it has been loaded fully. So I will print length documents and run python app.py. So you can see it has 213 uh, documents, which is exactly the size I have in the CSV file, excluding the header row. Okay, so since the document has been loaded properly, then we will try to vectorize and creating the embedding. And in here, I will use OpenAI text embedding models. For the vector database, I'm using Face here, which is a free open source version from Facebook. This is vectorizing and creating the embeddings from the documents using this embedding model. All right. And the next step is create a function to do similarity search. So I will create a function called retrieve information with one input, which is query. And then we will create one variable called similar response. db.similarity search, passing on the query, and we will define k equals three. If you remember, vector embedding basically means how close each data points are. And k equals three means it will return the three top results. Right? They are most similar to the query. And you can make it bigger if you want as well. But you can't make it too big because you need to be aware of the context limit for the large language model. Once we did that, I will also create a variable called page contents array to extract just page content from the results. And the reason I do that is because if you print the similar response, it actually has a lot more information like metadata and titles that we don't really need. And this will extract just the example data that we need here. So let's test out. Let's say I got this new customer message says, Hey, Daniel, I'm available to catch up with you next week on Zoom. 
and we will do a similarity search. So the results equal to retrieve info with customer message. And let's print results. We can open the terminal by clicking on the top right corner button here and then run Python app.py. Okay, now you can see it returns the results of past examples. Great, the next step is feed those best practice information into large language model. So I will go back here, I will remove this part for now, and then let's try to set up the large language model. So I will create a large language using the OpenAI chat model, I'll give it temperature zero, and then use the 3.5 June 13 model. And I will define the template. You are a world class business development representative. I will share a perspex message with you, and you will give me the best answer that I should send to this perspex based on the past best practice. And you will follow all of the rules below. One, response should be very similar to or even identical to the past best practice in terms of length, tone, voice, logical arguments, and other details. And if the best practice are irrelevant, then try to mimic the style of the best practice. And below is the message I received from the perspex. And here is a list of best practice of how we normally respond to the perspex in similar situation. Please write the best response that I should send to this perspex. So this is a prompt I will use that pass on both the new customer message as well as best practice examples. And I will create prompt templates from this, then create a large language model chain refer to this large language model and prompt that we just created. And in the end, we'll create this function to generate response. So I'll create this function called generate response, passing on the message, which firstly we'll do a similarity search to get the best practice and then feed this best practice to the large language model chain that we created. So let's try this. I will create the same message. Hello, Daniel. I'm available to catch up with you next week via Zoom or Google Meet. Whichever is more convenient, please let me know. So let's open the terminal again, run Python app.py. All right, so it returned this results. Hi, Nathan, sounds great. What's your best email? I'm happy to set up a Zoom call for us. If it's more convenient for you, you can also book time, it even including the meeting schedule links from past examples. I generate a response specifically to your business knowledge. And I can also change to another scenario where the customer is asking about how can I use uh, your product in a specific use case for qualitative research. Let's run this again. Okay, great. You can see that it generate res response that talk about how the platform can help them in the specific market research and customer insights example based on the past best practice. And again, this learn and mimic the style from the best practice from your top performers. All right, so we got this AI components of searching in our knowledge base and generating best practice email ready. The last part is let's create a streamlit UI so that we can share with other people in the company. So I will first go up and import streamlit as, and then I'll move down here, create a function called main, which will be called when we run streamlit. So you will define if name equal to main, then you will run this main function. And inside this main function, we will firstly set the title of the website to be customer response generator. I will give it title, which is same. And then I'll create a text area from Streamlit UI library. Give a label customer message. And if the message exists, which means people is putting the message, then we will show information that it is generating best practice message. We'll try to call the function generate response, then display the results when we get it. That's pretty much it. Let's save this and we'll run streamlit, run app.py. So we have this UI here. Then we can paste in one of the uh, email or message we receive from customer and then I'll apply. So it shows generating best practice messages. Okay, here you go. So you can see it generated a message here. And let's try another one where the user talk about, I would love to learn more about a specific use case like large language model. And uh, let's try this. Okay, so you can see it respond with their specific use case in mind. And it knows that at this point, let's just push for schedule a call. And it will actually format that insert the meeting link here as well. So that's pretty much it. If you want to share this uh, like app to other people instead of running locally, you can also just deploy on Streamlit as well. All you need to do is just push to GitHub and then you can go to streamlit.io and clicking sign in. Once you get in, you can click on this add new app and choose the repo that you just loaded and rename this file path to be the same as app.py here. And we will add a few advanced settings where uh, I will change the Python version to 3.11 uh, and then copy paste the uh, .env file, which contains your OpenAI API key inside. 
and then we'll click deploy. You will see this loading screen. It will probably take a few minutes. And once it's done, you have this link that you can share with others. But as a default, I believe this link is not public. So you will need to go back and find this one that you just uploaded. Click on the three dots button and then settings. Go to sharing and then change this to be public and searchable and click save. Then this link will be able to access by any person. But on the other side, you can also use other no-code platform like Relevance AI to build up those knowledge embedding workflow. For example, you can log into Relevance AI. The first thing we will need to do is go to the knowledge page. This is a place where you will dump all the knowledge data you have. So it can be from the CSV or PDF file, but it can also be from your own website. For this case, I will upload my CSV file. Just drag and drop here and click upload. Then it will give me a preview and I'll click confirm upload. And then it will show up this model for me to choose which column of data that I want to vectorize. And this is where I think platforms like Relevance AI are extremely useful. Because for this example, I actually don't need to vectorize both columns. I just want to vectorize customer message column when I do the similarity search. And vectorize both columns actually might reduce the accuracy in terms of search results. But Relevance AI just allow me to choose which column to vectorize uh, in a very easy way. And I will choose this customer message and click continue. Then it will automatically vectorizing the CSV into embedding. And this process will take a while at the beginning. So you will need to wait for a few minutes. But after that, it will be very fast. Once it's finished, you will see a table like this, allow you to preview the data that you just uploaded. Then we'll go to home page, click on add new chain button. And this is where the place you will create knowledge-based AI app. I will give a name, customer response generator, and I will click on this add data for knowledge and import the sales response CSV that I just uploaded. Then I will add a user input. User input basically means what kind of data that you want to allow users to put in. And in this case, for the Streamlit app we created, it basically have one text input for customer message. And we're gonna do the same here, just add an input for long text message and the given name message. Then the last step is we'll add a chain steps. Uh, chain step basically means what kind of actions you want to trigger from the data that we import here. I will click on that. They do provide a wide range of options from Google search to scripting website, but the one we will need is large language model here. And what I will do is I will literally co copy paste the prompt that we used in the Python app into the prompt here, except I will swap the two variable that we uploaded above, knowledge and message. And that's pretty much it. What does Redmond's AI do behind the scenes is they actually do the vector search automatically. For example, if you open the advanced options at the bottom, there's one section how to handle too much content. And if you click on this edit button, you will see at default, it chooses most relevant data, which basically is doing a vector similarity search. You can click on this advanced option to fine tune the search query further. And in here, I actually want to fine tune it to just search for the message and then click save. And that's pretty much done. You can start using it by clicking the save button and go back to the use tab. So this is where you can start using this app. And I will copy paste a message here and click run once. And boom, you got this message generated. If you want, you can actually click on the share button, click on deploy. Then you have a public app page that you can share with your colleagues instead of you deploying a web app by yourself. On the other side, you can also embed this app as iframe in your website or SharePoint. I believe they also provide an API endpoint that you can use in other workflow builder app like make.com or Zapier too. And that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'm really keen to see what kind of automation and workflow you start building from those knowledge base embedding. I'll continue to share more of those AI experiments and buildings. So please subscribe for more contents. Thank you and I see you next time.